Welcome to The Freak Show. Welcome to my video reviewing American Horror Story Cult, Episode 2. Welcome to The Freak Show. Now today's episode, episode two, again for American Horror Story Cult, it's called Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. It is written by Tim Miner and it is directed by Lisa Johnson. I guess if you do not want to be spoiled by this video, do not go any further. Now in this episode, don't forget guys, last episode, Allie woke up to a clown in the bed beside her. So the episode picks up exactly where episode one dropped off. Allie escapes the clown. She goes downstairs to grab Ivy and call the police. Ivy says, don't call him. She grabs a knife and they go upstairs to see what's going on because their son is up there. Um, but there, there's no clown. Uh, Ivy finds nothing. Allie breaks down and thinks that there's something wrong with her. Um, they kind of have like an intimate moment about how Ivy is telling her that she's real. Allie may not know what's real or not, but Ivy is definitely real. She's the one thing stagnant in her life. The clowns are with Oz and Chase. Um, excuse me, Oz and Chase. <laughs> the clowns are with Oz and they chase him into the bathroom. Seems like he was having a night terror. Ivy explains it because the little boy was in the tub when the clowns came for him. And then the next thing you know, he's back in the bed. And Ivy is uh, saying that he has night terrors. Now, when we come back from the opening credits, this is one week after Kai has been beaten. Um, he is running for office. Now, the new neighbors also move into the neighborhood. They're replacing the Changs. <laughs> and Allie goes to meet them. I, I guess, like, to spy on them. Um, she gets to the window of their front, at the front of the house, and she, instead of ringing the doorbell, she actually peeks inside. Um, the neighbor catches her, and instead of stopping to apologize, she just totally runs off from him, which was actually hilarious. Afterwards, Winter confronts Oz about the murder of the Changs that they witnessed. Uh, it really did happen, and she confirms it in this episode. She takes his pinky and does her thing. Pinky to pinky, flesh to flesh, and it was just an awesome moment. Um, then Oz is meeting uh, the new neighbors afterwards. Winter takes him over there. Allie freaks out <clears throat> because, uh, you know, of what she did earlier, and now Oz is over there. She goes to check on him with Ivy, <clears throat> and the neighbor is in his beekeeper outfit, shows her the bee cone, or the bee uh, cones, and Allie has like a little anxiety attack. Um, now, the new neighbors are very brutally honest uh, and very involved with their bees. We learn that the wife is uh, Meadow and the husband is Harrison. And they are so brutally honest that they admit that Harrison is gay and they married because when they were uh, in high school, Harrison and Meadow said that if they turned 35 and they weren't married at that time, that they would marry each other. Now they're married. Um, Allie and Ivy really didn't feel very comfortable with all their brutal honesty. And to be honest with you, there's something definitely up with the wife because she kept uh, hinting about the son. We got her backstory that she had skin cancer at one time. So I understand her hesitation of the son, but I think there's still something fishy about that. Um, now, Allie and Ivy are very uncomfortable in their house. And when they go to leave, they see the blood from the Changs still on the floor and the happy face still painted in blood on the front door. It, um, somebody had tried to paint it over it, but it didn't work. Now we do find out that Harrison and Meadow pri uh, previously had a bankruptcy, so they don't have very much money and the house was basically a steal. <laughs> they know that the Changs were murdered there and that's the reason why they were able to get the house so cheap. Later, Ivy goes to check on the restaurant because the a burglar alarm went off, but instead of Ivy going, Allie offers to go in her place. Oz was very scared about being there by himself with Allie. <laughs> Can't blame him. So Ivy stayed with him. Ivy's like the really cool, like strong person in the family. It's awesome. 
So when Allie arrives at the restaurant, the alarm is indeed going off. She checks the restaurant and hears weird noises coming from the meat freezer in the back of the store. She goes in there and she sees her manager dead, hanging on a meat hook. Now, I guess it's very imperative to make sure that you guys know that earlier in the day, the, the restaurant manager, I guess his name was uh, Roger, he got into an argument with a Hispanic employee named Pedro. Um, Roger made some very um, racist comments toward Pedro and Pedro was standing up for himself and threatened Roger. So now that Roger has been hung up to dry, so to speak, um, we got our first, uh, our, excuse me, our first look of Billy Eichner this episode. He shows up to interview Ivy and Allie uh, regarding Pablo and his threat that he made towards uh, Roger. Um, afterwards, we get Cheyenne Jackson. He has stopped by Allie's house one week after the incident at the restaurant where Roger has been murdered. Now, another thing too, is that when Allie found Roger, he was not fully dead. Allie, I guess, like had to kill him to, to or she tried to save him, but ended up actually killing him. Like she was trying to help him down from the meat hook, but it ended up, I guess, digging more into his spine and just ended up straight up killing him. So she hasn't been anywhere for a week. So Ivy basically asked Cheyenne Jackson, the psychiatrist, to stop by and check on Allie and talk to her. Allie has admitted to him that the new neighbors, Harrison and Meadow, gave her a gun. Um, but he does not tell Ivy. So Kai is running for city council and he, campaign, he campaigns at Allie's house. Um, he's very kind to her after he knocks on the door. Allie uh, is basically now so scared that she has... Um, put bars over the windows and the doors. So Kai is talking to her through the door, and this is part of the preview that we saw from last week. And she tells him, look, I recognize you. You're the guy who threw his latte at me. And he apologized to her. He said he wasn't on his, uh, he wasn't in the best moment. And he wants to talk to her about voting for him. And she says no to please go away. But at first he's kind. And then he turns into this, he turns so weird. He starts making excuses of why he needs to get into her house. Like his car broke down and he needs to use her phone. He's really in need of a drink of water. Can he come in and sit down? He really needs to use the best restroom. Can he please come in and use her restroom? And she freaks out, screams no, and shuts the door. So later, Winter convinces Allie to take a nice hot bath with a glass of wine because Allie is just so stressed out and she's contemplating on taking the pills that the doctor gave her. So uh, Winter takes her up there, runs her a bath, and she seduces Allie. I mean, it is so funny. She basically gets undressed. I mean, she's not fully undressed. She has a top on and bottom on. But she does basically seduce Allie. And while she's in the middle of seducing her, the lights go out. And Harrison, the neighbor, shows up after the girls have gone downstairs, which is Allie in Winter, to find out what's going on. Harrison yells through the window, lesbians, we're under attack. <laughs> Harrison definitely wins the one-liner award for this episode with his quote of, lesbians, we're under attack. It was hilarious. Um, so he tells Allie that they're under a terrorist attack. Nine states have gone dark. They don't really know what's happening, but they're expecting looters and all that stuff to happen very soon and to stay inside and lock the doors. So Winter is so um, concerned with her laptop and her ceramic uh, collection that she leaves Allie at the house to go to her house, which is hilarious. So <clears throat> Allie calls Ivy at the restaurant to let her know what's going on, sort of, before her phone drops. Uh, it has no battery. So Ivy, being the great wife that she is, puts a battery for her, cell, for her wife's cell phone into a box with some extra stuff for as a care package, gives the box to Pedro, her employee, and asks Pedro to please stop it by the house for uh, Allie until she gets home. So while this happens, the ice cream truck with the awesome clowns show up right outside of Allie's house. Now she goes upstairs and she gets her gun, she grabs Ozzy, and when someone is at the door, this is from the preview again that we got last week. She tells them, I'm going to open this door and whatever happens, don't let go of my hand. And instead of just opening the door and just wondering what's out there, she just literally throws open the door and shoots her gun. 
And unfortunately, she shoots Pedro, killing him by mistake. It is not one of the clowns. It is one of her employees. And this is where we get justice for Pedro. So this episode was brilliant. It had some really amazing, scary moments. It had some great information in it. Um, and it had some brilliant acting. I love the interaction between Winter and Allie and the dynamic of Allie and Ivy's relationship. Ivy seems to really love Allie, but it seems like she does have some sort of a sinister reason uh, for maybe why she's doing certain things. Anyway, I, I'm so excited to see what is going to happen for the rest of the season. Guys, don't forget, every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. are American Horror Story Weekly Wednesday live streams. Sunday belongs to evil, so every Sunday at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time is my Behind the Evil, Ash vs. Evil Dead live stream. Every Tuesday is Beyond the Horror Cult, where we review the episode that was just released by American Horror Story Season 7. So thank you all so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. Please let me know what you are thinking of the episode and the season so far into the comments. Please don't forget to like the videos and subscribe for them if you want to see more. And click the bell notification so that way you will receive notifications when I go live and when I post new videos. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I am so excited to see episode 3. Bye everybody! Mm -mm.